trek here, so I have to move my camper. Unfortunately, there's a water main break, so I'm without power. All I'm doing is switching uh, from one spot to another in the same campground, and I'm gonna show you how I do it, and this is gonna be beneficial if you're brand new to camping, so that way you can learn the simple stuff of switching hoses everything now there's going to be a few complications that i have to deal with i have some frozen hoses my waste lines uh not the black tank fortunately but my gray tank has about an ice block this big running through it and we've been boiling water i've got my cameraman zach helping me out today so right here what i'm doing is because there's a lot of snow i have to shovel out the spot i'm going into so zach why don't you go ahead and show everybody here and what I'm doing is just kind of being a little lazy, getting the, the key parts of where I need to go. I'm going to get a nice outline, get where my doors are, all that kind of stuff. So here we are at the camper. And Callie, get off, Zach. Um, I already disconnected the power. And one problem I've ran into is that my power hose or power cord is frozen in the ice. Also, my sewage lines are all frozen. I had to take apart my gray water tank because my gray water was open to be able to get it. And if you come over here, you can see that there is just a gigantic chunk of ice right there. And this is the cap right here. If you see this line, you can just twist this out right here. You can just twist this to disconnect your line. This is also important to know that when these break, you can just replace this piece, and sometimes that's a lot cheaper. I like finding the kits, but whatever works for you. So the biggest thing that you wanna make sure you do, first step always when you're getting ready to, to move your camper, is go through the inside. Find anything that can move and put it in a safe spot. You know your camper is gonna shift, it gets an earthquake effect, even though we're only moving what about a couple hundred feet it's still going to have a good earthquake effect especially because i'm going to be fighting through a little bit of snow it's not that cold out today it's uh 37 to 40 degrees so for a big ogre like me not bad but i've already taken care of the inside of the camper and honestly i would show you everything in there but with all the not having water everything it's a mess and i don't want the embarrassment so i apologize for that okay so now i back the truck up my ball is exactly over this now what you want to do is when you lift up this part of your camper you want it to be one inch over if you paint a chain link here when they drop at this point you'll always know your distance so i'm ready now to lower this and hook up my camper and the chains and i'll show you how to do that in just a second so now i'm on here i plugged in my power i'm still raising up my jack you want to make sure that you hook up the chains i like to do it so that way the hook is on the out here so that way the hook portion got a lot of snow there is facing upward and now I'm going to be able to pull this little pin here. Your camper is going to be a little bit different, I'm sure. They all are. Bring it all the way up. I got a good lock on there. And always remember to lock this and put a pin in. I keep my pin along my electrical cord so that way my power cable doesn't sway anywhere. And now I just got to do some walk arounds with the camper, make sure everything's good to go, and I'm ready to pull this baby. So now I've disconnected everything from the camper. And Zach, can you just pan along? You can see everything is disconnected. We're not going very far. Right here. And what I don't want you to forget, after you got that truck hook, take your chop blocks off. Now, unfortunately, for the sake of this video, because of all this snow and my hoses being frozen to the ground still, I'm not gonna be able to show you how I set it up again, because it's gonna be done over a period of probably days with this cold weather. So just do everything in reverse process, and please remember, when in doubt, walk around your camper. Do not rush this process. The more calm you stay, the better things are gonna go. I'm Shrek and happy camping. All right, my piggy bank's gotta go down. I'm gonna grab this. It's got my breads, assortment of all kinds of stuff in there. Pull that down. Grab my piggy bank, set that up here. 
inside that other box, the paper towels. Now I've got this printer right here and it's um, actually sat there and never moved a bunch of times. I have to grab one of my pictures that after two years, it decided to fall down. It's a picture of my family, my sisters and my mom many, many years ago. Get that put up. Here's my computer case. And I'm just going to stack all this stuff nicely all on the seat. And I'll just pick up a few more things. Dishes. It's been a long week. I didn't get to do dishes all week. And I didn't have water prior to that. So they piled up on me. And we all know how that goes. When it piles up, it just stays piled up for a while. So I'm going to leave them right in the sink. Make sure they're good and secure. I've never had an issue of a dish breaking or anything like that. So, all right, let's go on to our next step. Okay, so Kelly and I are outside and we're gonna pack up the grill. Now I have a Weber Q1200, packs up real easy just like that. I keep it in this bin. I have a cover for it. Unfortunately, it got a little wet and really needs to be washed. I'm gonna cover that there. I'll throw some of my Bonfire supplies inside there. Grab the cover, cover that up. My little table I usually use for the grill holds up. Now I picked this up, uh, which I don't know, a couple years ago at Walmart. It was about 20 bucks then. And it uh, looks like it does need some WD-40 after a couple of years just to make sure she's running good. I'll take care of that when we get to the next campground. There's that little mechanism. There we go. Load that in the back of the truck and we're almost ready. We're going to do a couple things with the black tank and some black tank and gray tank maintenance still. So stay tuned. From the last move to this one, being I was only being here for a week, I didn't set up any of my hoses or anything like that. I just ran purely on tanks for me to shower and use the bathroom and everything. So I'm gonna empty my black tank, then empty my gray tank so that way it cleans out my uh, nasty sewage hoses. And then we're gonna go inside, we're gonna add some Ridex into the toilet and because I'm going to be moving an hour, I want to get at least five gallons of water inside my black tank. I'm going to do the same thing with my gray tank. The reason I'm doing it also to my gray tank is when you don't get a lot of nastiness like you do your black tank in your gray tank, but you do get little bits of food byproduct, everything like that. So that way it just eats it up. And now when I start moving the camper with that Ridex in there, I'm also gonna add Dawn dish soap too. Don't know a lot of people that do it that way. I like Dawn, safe for the environment. You know, they use it on little duckies and everything. So figure it's good enough for the camper. But that way it's gonna turn both tanks as we're going down the road into a gigantic washing machine. As I told you before, if these hoses break, you can repair them. You just cut this hose and you're gonna have to use some wire snips or anything like that. Get that in there, screw her in. It's gonna thread, 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 come on. Oop, gotta pull it out all the way. Don't worry, this is a clean hose. Maybe if I screw it in the right direction, that might help. And then this last piece right here, you wanna thread that up and get that really good and snug. Don't over tighten. So I'm draining the black tank now. All it was is just hook up the hose all the way to the sewage there. Release the hounds if you pardon the expression and let that flow out there. This part is nasty. You can wear gloves if you want. I wash my hands a lot and I realized this morning I don't have any more gloves. So bad pre-planning on my part, but make sure you have enough. I buy a big box grab them as I need them and then all of a sudden I realized, oh no, I don't have any more. When you are doing your black tank, you might not want to stand this close to the hose and everything. It freaking stinks. I love my lifestyle of living in a camper, but this part 
it, it stinks. So what I've done now is I had to play a little bit of a game with the hose to get the right incline. Kind of reminds me of how you're a kid, if you played on the rocks running through a little stream or river, how you'd adjust them to move the water around. You got to do the same thing with this. <laughs> now also what I did is I put something on the flusher of my toilet to hold it down so that way the water is as if you're flushing the toilet pumping into there so i'm getting a little bit more water to rinse out the bottom of that tank real well i'd like my tank to be really clean and what i'm discovering is after a week i'm full, full of it more than i think black tank's done i've got it connected up to my gray tank here we're going to open that up and now we got good nice clean water running out and it's going to clean out my line, give it a good rinse. I'll get it packed up. I put all of my hoses in an old army bin that I've had for many years. And sometimes what I'll do, once I get it all in there, I'll spray it with bleach, soak it with water. Also, once I'm done putting away all my hoses, everything here, get it all picked up, put the slides in. I'm just about ready to move my camper. When I disconnect my water line, <clears throat> I'll spray out this area with water over here just if there was any seepage any leaks from the sewage hose that way I'm not leaving something nasty for that next camper so they can be a happy camper also black tanks all empty I got my red X I'm just gonna dump some of that in there run the water because it is a dry powder let's open up that box a little bit more I want to get the equivalent of one good solo cup in there. Yeah, sometimes I can be a little country. I measure things by solo cup. We'll get that all in there and that black tank is going to be pure gold clean. And right now, actually, before I forget, I've got my Dawn dish soap and I'm going to get two, three, four, and for good measure, we're gonna put a fifth squ uh, squirt out of there. I buy Dawn dish soap in bulk from Sam's Club. Now I know what one gallon of water is inside my Dometic toilet. If you don't, grab a one gallon jug, fill it up, pour it inside there, look for the water level. You don't have to get a precise measurement or whatnot. But also with that uh, Ridex, you might wanna have a cup, a jug, something, just to rinse the bowl out nice and clean get all that red X and your Dawn dish soap out because sometimes your toilet will not uh, rinse it out as nice as you want. And that's why even with a camper, you still have to keep one of these brushes around. The ladies obviously are gonna know what I'm talking about more than the guys, but, and if you are a guy that knows what that is, hey, good for you, man. Now that's all done. We're gonna get the slide put in. I got everything moved out of the way, I think, but I'm gonna observe it real close. Make sure when you're doing this, any of your slides, you're paying attention. When I was outside, I checked everything around there, in or out, look around, 360. And my clock just fell back over the slide, but that's okay. Uh-oh, it's hitting the camera stand. All right, that's done. So that's one more step done. We're getting our way out of here. When you're rushing through, trying to get everything done, try to stop yourself from that. Don't rush. Take out the garbage. Yeah, I reused a dog bag, so for garbage. Now, we got the slide done. Close the door here. I'm gonna put in my step. I am wearing steel toe boots. If you're wearing tennis shoes, I don't recommend kicking steel. I'm gonna pack up the other stuff in the truck and then we're gonna go disconnect the water line. I'm gonna spray down that area, disconnect my shore power um, cable and get that rolled up nicely. Because I'm only going an hour for what's convenient for me, I just go ahead and stick them right inside this door. Yeah, it does create a little bit of a hazard, but it's what's convenient for me. You might have a different situation, storage that is more accessible. My storage bin's actually very accessible but it's a small spot. So if I can just throw it in here quick instead of a spot only this big, 
it works for me. If you haven't already, please click like and subscribe on my videos so that way you can get notified for all my upcoming videos. Thanks everybody. Hey, I'm Shrek. I hope all this helps you to become a better camper and happy camping everyone.